Connor mentioned uh, Kevin Turnbull from PNP Optica. Um, I want to take the opportunity right off the bat to uh, give a special thanks to OAF, uh, Tyler, Kathy. Um, as Tyler mentioned, um, we have been around a few years as a technology company, but um, when I joined back in September of 2014, so we started to take a hard look at the place for our technology in the food, in, uh, food industry, and specifically food processing. And I was, um, I was refreshed by the receptiveness of groups like OAP at just helping guide companies like us, you know, introductions, uh, programs that we could uh, benefit from in order to uh, in order to get traction and, and figure out what, where our place is. Um, so I thought at this point in the day, uh, so many great talks about innovative food products and a uh, uh, good lively discussion about energy. Nothing better at this point than to have a talk about data. Uh, really exciting stuff, but. But luckily, the kind of data that my company deals in uh, is a little more interesting than just ones and zeros. We're talking about chemical imaging data, uh, AKA hyperspectral imaging data. Uh, we prefer to use the terminology um, uh, chemical imaging data as opposed to the, the core science uh, name of spectroscopy, uh, because when we talk about spectroscopy uh, as a tool in improving efficiencies in different types of industrial processes, uh, we get things like spectral what? So we've, we've shifted our, um, our language to this because it says more about what it is. It's, it's seeing the chemical composition of, uh, of materials and substances. Um, I talk about it as a, as a fancy kind of camera. Um, it is a vision technique. Okay? So we're talking about a vision technique that sees the chemistry of different types of materials. And of course, those types of materials can include uh, food, and we'll talk about why that is uh, valuable. This is a, a picture of one of the, the engines of, of, uh, of what we do. Um, that's a spectrometer with a, a camera integrated on, on it to, uh, to see chemistry. Backing up a step about our company. So we, we manufacture these, these systems. Chemical imaging systems are not a, a revolution. Spectroscopy has been around a long time. But we are an innovation in this space. Uh, the way our systems are designed, um, the components that go into our systems, and the know-how around how we put them together uh, result in a system that is uh, ultra-high uh, resolution and, uh, and, and with uh, ultra-high sensitivity. Um, so again, it's about the ability to see the chemical composition of materials of these systems. They are a combination of hardware and software and services. That is the, that is the proposition that we have. Uh, and uh, of course, this type of thing applies to food because, as we know, food and chemistry are uh, very intertwined. <coughs> chemistry of food tells us a lot about it. Um, the core science, not to get deep into the details, but what, we're, what we are measuring is how different materials like food measure uh, uh, reflected light. So when we shine light on something and measure what is reflected back, uh, that can be correlated with what that material is made of. So grass is green because it absorbs all wavelengths of light except for green, and that's associated with the, the chemistry of what is in uh, grass. So that's, that's the core of the, of the science. And our, prior to getting involved in the food industry, our flagship success uh, was actually in the recycling industry. You might think that's far removed from what we're talking about, but in fact it's, it's very analogous. In recycling, so in the plants where, let's say, plastics are brought in in, in batches, um, one of the objects is to get them separated into uniform batches uh, according to the type of plastic that they are. And that's the, that's the chemical composition of that plastic. It's not just the color or the size of the shape. It's, it's different types of plastics. And so classical imaging systems that only see size, shape, and color are not sufficient. But with this kind of technology, if you have two bottles that are both clear, roughly the same size and roughly the same shape, but they are different kinds of plastic, we see that. And we can then trigger the engineering to separate those into, into their different uh, batches. So technology is used today in North America in about 12 different facilities. 10 of those are for plastics, two of them are for uh, fibers. What we have seen since um, starting into uh, discussions with organizations in the, in the food processing industry, 
uh, is a compelling case for using the technology to solve challenges associated with three areas. Um, process efficiency, <coughs> uh, food quality, ensuring food quality and knowing relative quality as we go through a, a packaging or a, a processing uh, facility, and then safety. One project that uh, Tyler referenced that uh, we are uh, uh, about to embark on, uh, uh, given the approval to do so, uh, we have an application in uh, with uh, Ippolito Fruit and Produce as the lead. Uh, we are a member of the, of the coalition in that project that will look at using our technology to help solve a, uh, a waste issue uh, in their facility. Uh, currently, optical sorting systems are used to sort uh, spinach good from bad, and unfortunately there is um, uh, an amount of bad spin or, sorry, good spinach that ends up in, in the waste pile, and that gets trucked away uh, for no further use. Um, there's an opportunity here to sort spinach, not only good from bad, but to also grade it into, say, multiple categories much more effectively and ultimately reduce the, uh, the amount of waste. So this is a, a project in which we have an application in uh, for a GF2 um, uh, grant. Again, Ippolito being the lead, uh, Consular College is involved in this, uh, University of Guelph, uh, Axiom uh, Mill Writing and Fabrication, uh, and uh, great help from, uh, from MentorWorks to, to guide us through that process. Um, just to highlight a bit about what <coughs> our system outputs, uh, because uh, I've talked about it, let's, let's uh, show a little bit about it. This is classical imaging, of course, size, color, and shape. We're looking at some spinach leaves. This is the kind of output that our systems generate. Okay, we're looking at a hyperspectral image or a chemical image. And uh, it looks nice and colorful, but the, the potency of this data is significant because what we're looking at is each color representing a specific uh, chemical entity. That is what's gleaned from, from what we capture. And each pixel in this image, uh, buried within that, is a chemical signature that we have retrieved. Okay? So you've got a lot of chemistry information here about the target substance. When we showed these results, just as a very preliminary feasibility study to if a legal response was, well, I, I have no idea what that pink uh, entity is, but I'd sure like to figure it out because it might tell me something about what's going on with the chemistry of this spinach. Maybe that's tied to longevity, maybe it's tied to a chemical reaction of some kind that we should have more awareness about. Uh, Tyler mentioned that we are also um, uh, entrenched in the uh, meat processing industry as well. And so uh, the applications for meat are actually plentiful. Uh, one of them is in the grading of uh, different kinds of primal cuts uh, as a reproducible technology for doing so. Uh, here's an example, hyperspectral image uh, output of a ham steak. And again, the eye can see what's bone and what's, uh, what's fat and what's lean, but the intricacy with which this technology will see uh, that kind of thing will tell us a lot more about what the real quality of a, of a particular piece of meat is. So coming to uh, close here, um, I'll just say a little bit more about different kinds of, of applications that we are seeing. Um, it's been a very interesting journey since jumping into this a year and a half ago. Um, it's, it's almost like uh, picking the best applications uh, as opposed to trying, to trying to find them at this point. Um, I've talked about uh, inline quality analysis and grading. That's, that's actually a key point. When I say inline, that's, uh, that's an important aspect of, of where this technology can fit uh, because oftentimes uh, samples are taken from processing lines, taken to a lab, run on spectrometers or other instruments, and results are brought back. In the meantime, how much product has moved through that we don't know enough about? As a technology, this would be an inline, robust, um, uh, reproducible uh, way of gathering this information and using it to make decisions about things like quality. Um, formulated products is an interesting one. Uh, and as I just mentioned, you know, how much product goes through that maybe you don't expect, where is it by the time you figure that out? Well, if you can do it in line, continuous, with accuracy and know that you're in spec and know that nothing's going wrong, 
um, then uh, you can prevent uh, a lot of heartache there. The last two are kind of new areas of exploration for us. Uh, the more we talk with folks in the industry, um, the more we can see that uh, perhaps there's an opportunity to use this kind of data in amongst other forms of data uh, to determine when things could be, uh, could be picked, uh, or using the data that we generate as an inline technology in the plant, and then correlating that knowledge base with uh, certain practices at the agricultural level in order to uh, perhaps adjust those practices and, and get more good product or more higher yield at the end of the day. Um, that's uh, that's basically the uh, uh, wrap. I'm happy to take questions, or unless you want to save them to the end. Yep. Thanks, Tyler. We will. Thanks, Kevin. Yep. Yeah.